Good morning. Once again, Happy New Year. As we declare, we are totally serene in 2019. And that we come together not by chance, but by divine appointment. And if you are viewing at this moment, this message is for you. The theme is the mystical, the magical, and the miraculous. That go before us and prepare the way with ease and grace. And I added ease and grace because I think the, the magical and this whole miraculous thing called life is about ease and grace, about breathing in the energy of light. And when we know that we are divinely connected to a higher power, whatever we conceive that power to be, whatever name we put on it, it matters not, but to acknowledge that which is within us is greater than that which resides in the world of conditions, appearances, and effects. And what that means is that we're all subject to the human condition, each and every one of us. And when we buy into the appearances that show up, that is not reality. And when we hear, well, in the real world, no. The outer world is not the real world. That's the relative world of appearances, conditions, and effects. The real world is within us. It is the secret place of the Most High where we go to our Father, Mother, God, and we pray in secret, and we are acknowledged openly by the outward demonstrations of our lives. Yes, the mystical, the magical, and the miraculous go before us and prepare the way with ease and grace. This morning, and I love this whole topic, uh, Mark Victor Hansen and uh, uh, Jack, Jack, what is his name, Jack? Can't, thank you, Canfield wrote the book, The Aladdin Factor. Now, Mark used to speak for me in my San Diego ministry before, you know, he was really known. And I love that when we know people before, you know, I knew you when. And uh, he had some marvelous ideas. And that he would come to our San Diego ministry and he would share them and we were very excited for him. But I met Jack Canfield years before because Jack was a teacher. And my late husband, Neil Stroud, taught fifth grade in a Title I school, English as a Second Language, in Pacoima, California. It was a kind of a tough crowd. And he came, Jack Canfield came, and he had written a book called 101 uh, Ways to Teach Self-Esteem in the Classroom. And so all of the teachers got behind this and began restructuring uh, how they related to the children. And it was really interesting. There was one teacher who received, you know, these were like all the bad, bad kids that were labeled. And she received uh, uh, all their information. And she went through their name and she saw, you know, the, the, the numbers after the IQ. And one uh, young man was particularly a problem child, uh, she gave extra attention to. And he excelled, and he grew, and he was amazing. And he was usually in the principal's office every single day, and something happened. He shifted, he had a transformation. The principal was amazed. And he said, how did you do this? And she said, well, how did I do what? I was looking at their names, and I saw, you know, their IQs, you know, after the, their names. And this young man's a genius. Incidentally, most problem kids are. I want to add that. However, the principal was, like, taken aback, and he said, those weren't their IQs. Those were their locker numbers. <laughs> but she didn't know that. So she treated him as a genius and with respect, and the young man responded in the way that he was treated. Now what I love about our way of life with Emerson, if you act as if, it will be. And the act of each and every one of us, we are Aladdin. We come into this world, you know, we're, we're pretty naive. We have things to learn, to grow, to expand, to be all that we can be, each and every one of us. However, the genie is that 90% of our power.
power within the subconscious mind. But we have to put the words of the faith and the action with intention. So we activate the magic lamp that each and every one of us has been given. We light the light from within and we activate it by this rubbing of the lamp and cleaning it. And something happens. There's an energy that arises and it says, your wish is my command. This is what the universe says. Your wish is my command. And I love what Dr. Ernest Holmes said. As long as it hurts no man, right, and causes no harm, that this is not a, get a rich quick scheme, like you know, it's people that, well, I just put the law of attraction into action. Well, we have to build a consciousness with that. And when we build a consciousness of health and wealth, in fact, I took a little three day, and I do this every year, right after New Year's, I go with it for three days. And on the third day, I rise. And I have these revelations and epiphanies. And I love that I turn off all devices, and I just go within in my silent meditation to the secret place of the Most High, knowing that which needs to be revealed is revealed, that which needs to be known is known, that which needs to be released is released, and that which needs to be open to is. So when we acknowledge the power and the presence in the universe, and we speak our word into the law of mind, knowing that our word returns a full-blown expression of that which we have sent forth because that which we utter, remember, becomes the utter. And the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are accepted and received, O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Every day we are redeemed by the renewing of our mind. Be not conformed to the things of this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That every day we're given the opportunity to make a shift. And when we make that shift in mind, the universe responds. But we put the works with the faith. We rub that lamp. We acknowledge that it's action with intention. And that when the genie arises and it says, your wish is my command to be prepared. Because the universe loves the prepared mind. This is how we create, this is what good luck is. The universe loves it when we're in preparation and we're accepting. Of course, one man went to a psychic and uh, she had a little sign out and uh, she said, any two questions, $150. And he said, oh my gosh, isn't that rather expensive? She said, yes, next question. <laughs> so what we put out comes back, right? So it's called mindfulness. And we hear about mindfulness a lot, but it's, it's an ancient term. It's, it's uh, really from Hinduism, being mindful and aware and conscious of the present moment. That's why, you know, when I remember I was a little girl, was watching TV, and I, these yogis would lay down on glass. And they would not be harmed, because their consciousness lifted above the physical. So when we lift ourselves above the physical, we don't have to demonstrate it by, you know, quite so dramatic uh, t uh, terms. But to realize that we are transcending the everyday that we have that spiritual alchemy to transform the routines of work and the celebrations of life and love. So that when that genie arises through the lamp and says, your wish is my command, that we have clarity. And through that divine clarity, our life unfolds in miraculous ways. When uh, I had, was speaking in, in uh, uh, Scotland, and then I was going to go the week after and speak in Germany, present at the Hamburg University, with my dear friend, uh, who is part of our board for the International Foundation for World Peace and Research, in which I was the president, his name is Dr. Danny Schumann, and he was the chief of staff 
at the Hamburg Hospital. So I had a week between Scotland presenting there and uh, then going to Germany. So I decided that I would go to Ireland for a week. And I wanted to just get in touch with my Irish heritage. And it was also a, a very significant birthday for me. So my grandmother came over on, my great grandmother came over on the boat. My grandma came from Ireland. And so I wanted to see the spiritual places in Ireland. I want to get in touch with that energy. And I went to some amazing, amazing places and I felt that energy, the ancient energy that speaks to us when we are allowing ourselves to be still and know that I am God. And I felt that. And I felt that divine connection. And every day I would go uh, in the afternoon to a place, a darling little Irish, kind of like a little uh, pub, and it was called Peaches and Cream and I would have a latte and something sweet every day. And there was this uh, young man who would serve me and uh, we had a connection and he said, now I have a feeling about you, so I, I wanna know about you. So I shared that, you know, I was in the ministry and you know, I, was, I had Irish heritage and here we are. And we formed this just very wonderful connection. He was in his 20s and he was just a darling young man. And he said that, and his name, and last name was Stuart, that his, his father was Irish and his mother was Chinese. And he was just absolutely darling. And how he felt, you know, so grateful to have this heritage that had come together. And to also to be in Ireland, where there is a lot of Irish lore. And there's always the little people, and there's the four-leaf clovers, and there's all this kind of magic. And I never roll my eyes at any of that. Because I think everything is there for us to enjoy, to acknowledge that there is a magic in the world. And that one of the highest archetypes is the magician. And that magician takes the alchemy, the alchemical moment, and transforms it from base metal to gold. We can take an ordinary experience and transform it into something golden and something beautiful. That's why I love our way of life. That we are co-creators with the divine. That we are created in the image and likeness of God that is not only good, it's very good. And that I created you a little lower than the angels. That that's a pretty high place to come from, to acknowledge that we are here in the world but of a higher spiritual vibratory frequency. And one of the funny, what I love about life is there's all these outrageous moments too. And so they had like a little bar in Peaches and Cream and, and they had a really cute Irish barman. And uh, there was an Irish fellow and he said, now she said, what do I, what does it take to get a little kiss? And she said, oh, chloroform. <laughs> I loved it, loved it, loved it. Yeah, I guess she had to be there, but it was hysterical. And when you're in that kind of energy field, you feel the light. Why do birds soar? They take themselves lightly, don't they? So we have to remember to temper our lives with the energy of light. And, you know, I, I love all the mystic arts. And uh, one of my astrologers, in fact, I see that she's here, and uh, her name is Claudia uh, Thompson. And she's a fabulous astrologer. And I, my moon is in Scorpio, and my sun is in Leo, and my rising is Libra. So the Scorpio wants to do all the deep stuff and really get down to it and almost like never come out of it. But my sun is in Leo, and that's public. It's very public and loves people and operates from the heart. So in that moment of wanting to like hide, you know, and, and do my work, the Leo brings me out and the Libra, the right, you know, it's a balance. So we have to remember that we live in balance. We don't want to be so spiritually minded, we're of no earthly good, right? We want to be in the world and have a higher spiritual vibratory frequency and so that we can still relate. And that when we open ourselves to life, life is there for us on so many levels. So here we are. 
on the very first Sunday. Each of us is Aladdin on this brand new Sunday of the new year. And we've been given the lamp. The secret of the lamp is we put the works with the faith. As we clean it, as we shine it, as we polish it, that genie arises within us and says, your wish is my command. So let's direct the energy, the energy flow in a way that's of the highest vibratory frequency that does not get caught up in the everyday personality gossipy stuff, but lifts through that, transcends through that, transmutes that energy and says, your experience is golden. And you have a choice. Choose thee this day whom you will serve. So with that being said, on this glorious, glorious Sunday, we're all going somewhere. And do you know where that is? Higher. It's higher yet. Where is it? Higher. higher yet. Where is it? Higher, higher yet. Because we are in a high place. And we will not come down. None of these outer things move us. We are in a high place, and we will not come down. I say to you, Namaste, the God in me salutes the God in you. I say, Shalom, the peace that passes all understanding. And God bless us, everyone. And so it is. Thank you.